John Teller distortion. The John Teller distortion is nothing but here. This theory mainly explained by John and Teller. This this was scientist. So what he say means when you take a non-linear molecule in a degenerate state. So non-linear molecule is nothing but what here. For example, I have taken some. This is a non-linear molecule. We can say here. Okay, linear means. CO2 and H3. So these are the examples we are getting. CO2. Okay. So here non-linear molecule. This will be having some degenerate state. So what happens? They will cause some distortion. Okay. For example, if you take two people, in that one people is very calm, another people is very silent. So when the people, when the other person is going on speaking, what happens? will be disturbing okay so then what we can say here some sort of disturbance it is going to happen so to quiet the person to keep quiet the person what we do we say that or else we go from there right we say to be quiet or we say that we go from there instead of disturbing so that is the same thing happening in the john teller distortion so here mainly it will speaks about tetrahedral complexes so what is the definition is nothing but here for a non linear molecule for example this is a non linear molecule which is in electronically degenerate state electronically degenerate state is nothing but what here we are happening repulsions this is happening repulsions so that one we call it as electronically degenerate state so then some sort of distortion occurs there whenever the repulsion is happening what happens there will be some distortion is going to occur so then what happens automatically it will remove the degeneracy energy and symmetry there will be a loss of symmetry degeneracy and energy that one we call it as john teller effect this theorem mainly explains about this one okay but now how the molecules are distorted how the distortion occur so we are going to describe it, this one okay so what is meant by electronically distorted degenerate state so these are all you are going to see here in this mainly some conditions we are having here so remember every time that we should have asymmetrically orbital is filled asymmetrical orbital is filled so what do you mean by asymmetrical orbital so asymmetrical means what here asymmetrical is nothing but here d1 if you have been for example d1 you are having So in this only one electron is there. If you take d3 for three orbitals, it is having three. Okay. So sorry for it. I'm writing in the series of t2z and dz in octahedral complexes. Okay. So d3. So here, then what happens if you take d5? One, two, three. This is t2z. This is dz. So whenever more number of unpaired electrons is there, that one we call it as high spin. If it is having less number of electrons, that one we call it as low spin. So here more number of unpaired electrons is there. So this is in low spin complex. When you rearrange instead of writing here, the D five, if you have written like this. So this is the D five means very less number of electron. This is a low spin. Before we have written high spin complex. So means what happens? This is a asymmetrical manner. Okay, when you have seen D one and D three, D one is asymmetrical. But when you see D three, what happens? It is a symmetrical. All three is in same state. But when you see this one, two is paired and one is unpaired electron. So this is what asymmetrical. So what I have told you, what is the first condition? 
in john taylor distortion the asymmetrical orbital should be filled first so means so what this is empty one electron is empty so because of this what we can say this is a an asymmetrically filled but here if you have been taken here octahedral complexes like cu h2o6 okay so this will this is a d9 complex we can say which complex this is a d9 complex copper is what here copper is 29 automatically what we are going to get here 29 means d9 4s2 argon okay so this is the electronic configuration so here two of the metal ligand bonds are longer than four see here so these two are very long compared to this one so this type of distortion we call it as tetragonal distortion we say okay why because the bonds are very far here if you take another example see here if you take another example of kcrf3 so here the chromium is a oxidation state in this is plus 2 now here there are four long bonds f bonds and two short f bonds okay so it will compress here so means what we can say here compress compress is nothing but what here see here k c r f6 we are taking here example is wrong so here when you take chromium which is in a plus 2 oxidation state these four bonds are longer these two bonds are shorter as according to stereochemical axiom so here the bonds is what compressing which will come under the tetragonal shape only okay so this one will be also tetragonal shape this one will also tetragonal shape means what happens here <coughs> when ligand is approaching on along the axis so automatically along the axis this will compress this one we call it as tetragonal compression so this one we call tetragonal elongation so this two will occur the distortion here so here we have taken octahedral complex another example so which is symmetrical and undistorted this is a symmetrical why because all bonds are in equal condition now let us see here how this distortion occurs so we have taken first example cu h2o6 plus 2 and also kr f6 we have taken so in this what happens <coughs> one is tetragonally elongated one is tetragonally compressed if you take a tetragonally elongated structure which is a d9 here it is divided into t2z ez3 t2z how many electrons it is 6 ez how many electrons 3 so here one lone pair of electron is there okay so when you remove one electron what happens it is getting d8 configuration so means what it is a high spin it is whether it is low it may act as low spin and also high spin when you remove electron what happening here when you are removing electron it is getting t8 configuration when you add electron again it is getting d9 configuration so here the electron can present on this orbital or we can say this orbital also not only the electron should present here the electron may present here the other electron whatever it is there it can arrange in this one and also this one okay so either dz square it can occupy or dx square minus y square orbital it can electron can enter so but why they can enter because this is having same energy so this type of state we call it as electronically degenerate state i think you have understood what is electronically degenerate state so it has a possible it has a possibility to enter into this state and also this state so why because this is having same energy so then which orbital will be the ninth electron to go into okay so here to go into which orbital 
if the electron goes into dz square orbital there will be more charge density z axis why because the z axis is present on along the axis not in between the axis this means that what the z electron cannot approach along the axis when the dz square orbital is occupied okay as there will be more repulsion also in dz square we can say why because ligand contains what here lone pair of electrons which lies on z axis and other ligand moving a bit so there will be less repulsion then what we can say here the complex ion is a tetragonally elongated how you say it is a tetragonally elongated if it is going to dx square minus y square z square it will be having very less repulsion if the ligand approaching only dz square that then we can say what here it is undergoing elongation complex so now so along the z axis what we can say metal which means energy dz square is lowered by the dx square minus y square t2g is also affected here to a very less extent but dx z dyz orbitals which is components along z axis interact less with the z axis charges and it will be having very less energy compared to dx z and dyz okay so now let us see about dx square dyz dz x dz square dx square minus y square how these orbitals are going into tetragonal elongation so if the electron enter into dx square minus y square there will be greater amount of charge density as before we have discussed okay ligands cannot approach along x and y axis it can approach only on the only single electron it can approach okay only the z square axis only it is going to approach so this thing is called as what here tetragonal compression so here x y plane are stabilized compared to d z square why because this is having less energy compared to this one this one will undergo tetragonal elongation this one will undergo tetragonal compression here so similarly it will also affect the t2g orbitals now in the dxy will undergo the lesser more and i mean more stable compared to dxy the dyz so then what happens here so then dxy because it points more directly towards ligand again the degeneracy is lifted here overall energy lower so this is about elongation and compression so now which d orbitals raised in tetragonal compression so here if this is compression this is elongation we have taken okay this is compression this is elongation so which one will be having here how much you come how much greater the stabilization than compression that is the actually elongated complex so which occurs electronically d generated not just for d1 so there will be d4 also okay for d1 if you have been taken only one elongation okay so that the general com compression is happened here only dxy is the choice of this one next that is about the john teller distortion here now let us see about crystal field stabilization energy what is crystal field stabilization energy crystal field stabilization energy is nothing but what here the energy difference okay the energy difference between the octahedral and tetrahedral very centrally call it as crystal field stabilization energy so means what we can say here <coughs> so when the symmetry of the local field surrounding the metal ion the energy difference between e g and t 2 g levels we call it as 10 dq in octahedral complexes and it is divided by a energy t 2 g as minus 4 dq and e g as 6 dq the sum of this one we call it as crystal field stabilization energy so now here see for d5 and d10 complex they have taken 
32TC EZ level. Here we should know high spin and low spin. High spin and low spin is nothing but what here? High spin indicates here weak feel ligands. Low spin indicates strong feel ligands. Means what? Fluorine, chlorine, so iodine, bromine. These all will come under the high spin. Okay. Group 4D and 5, I mean 6D. Weak field is nothing but what here? 7D and 6D orbitals. And coming to low spin complexes will coming under sinets 4D and 3D orbitals when you write there okay so in high spin and low spin complexes we are getting this value how we are getting this value because see here for example this one we are explaining in octahedral complex okay so for example So let us take three orbitals B5. Here one, one, one. Here two orbitals. Okay. So here this is a high spin. Why? Because more unpaired electrons are present. That's why we say it is a high spin. If less unpaired electrons are present, that's when we call it as low spin. See so in this, these three orbitals we are taking as a in octahedral complex. This is for three and this is for two. Okay. So this is about what here? 3 into minus 3 to 3 is divided with what here 4 d cube. Easy is divided into 6 d cube. And for d10 also same thing minus 6 and 4. So this is about the decrease in energy caused by splitting of energy level. We call it as ligand field stabilization energy or we can say crystal field stabilization energy. For tetrahedral and octahedral complex they have given different types of energy. See for d0 we are having weak field. 0 and for d1 everything is same and for d2 also same d3 this is increasing in strong field ligand okay so these are increasing so see here d4 for all complexes in octahedral complexes i have shown you in splitting energy so this is about crystal field stabilization energy table okay next one let us see here spectrochemical series so what is spectroschemical series? So this is nothing but here arrangement of common ligands in increasing order. First we will be writing here weak field ligands. After that we are going to write here strong field ligands. Means what we can say here decreasing increasing order means what here these all are weak field ligands. Okay. For right side we are going to write here strong field strong field ligands. This is a weak field ligand. S is also present starting a weak field. So this is also a weak field. Okay. Coming to here, this should be a strong field. Why? Because it is present. But we are considering what here? Weak field ligand. Why we are considering here weak field here? Remaining all are what here? Strong field ligands. These all are. Okay. Again, this is a weak field. So what they have told you? The ligands present on RHS of this series. Or strong field means RHS right hand side whatever it is present that is strong field this is weak field okay so this is nothing but spectrochemical series the increasing order of the ligands we call it as weak field and strong field and here that one we call it as spectrochemical series next what are they here merits and demerits so it can easily say the geometry for the complex and also why some complexes are tetrahedral and square planar it can say and also it can say magnetic properties the color of the transition metal complexes also it can say what is its limitations <coughs> it cannot explain the delocalization colon character it cannot explain and we are taking ligand at point charge that one it cannot explain properly and it cannot give pi bonding interactions it can give only sigma bonding interactions and it cannot give strength of the ligands also. Okay, so these are the demerits. Now let us see crystal field splitting energy depends upon different factors. One is oxidation state. So oxidation state is increased automatically. What happens? Ligands will attract more. If the central metal atom oxidation state increases automatically. Ligands will attract towards the central metal atom. 
then automatically what happens more strongly the orbitals also increases okay at the same way if you take transition metals so from first to second of a transition metal what happens 50% increase in size and the 50% increase in going from the second row compared to first row and second row each will increase same how this one increase due to the size of the d orbitals so this is the size of the 3d compared to 4d and 5d will be having the larger d orbitals why because here the atomic number is increasing okay next one ligand so here we are in ligands mostly we speak about what here spectrochemical series so this is the strength we are going to have weak field ligands like cl minus scn give rise to smaller values and strong field ligands will give larger values of delta naught so it also produce the metals for spectrochemical series that is this one so this is nothing but crystal field theory noctahedral tetrahedral square planar complexes and different types of examples we have taken so by this we have completed coordination chemistry thank you